Right, in this lesson we're going to look at uh, differentiation at a little bit higher level than we've worked with so far. Now, you should all be very confident now of handling the standard formula y equals kx to the n, and you remember if you differentiate that, dy by dx is equal to nk to the, sorry, x to the power n minus 1. Make that a bit clearer. Okay. Now, when we were doing that result and using it, we made the assumption uh, that n was an integer, whole number. In fact, positive integer. Well, fortunately for us, it doesn't have to be uh, a positive integer at all. And it is true, so in fact, it's true for all values of x. Those of you that like symbols, I know lots of you do, the phrase for all, which is very, very common in mathematics, a nice little symbol for that is an upside down A. So I might use that occasionally, uh, so, so remember what it means. OK, so we've got three examples then uh, to look at over here. In order to use the rule, of course, I must write the equation or the function in this form. So the rule is still to do with this. So in question one, I have to write 2 over x squared as 2 times x to the power negative 2. So now we will start to realise how important the indices work um, was that we looked at. Uh, so you must be very, very confident in manipulating different types of uh, indices. So now I've written it in exactly the form of the formula, so I can do the differentiation. So dy by dx, and the rule, we bring down the power and multiply it by the number in front. The power is negative 2. If I bring down that power and multiply by the number in front, I get negative 4. Then I have to take 1 away from the power. And of course, you get so sort of locked into the original formula and the work you've done before that a lot of people, sadly, will write this as negative 1. If you take 1 away from negative 2, you get negative 3. Depending on how the question requires the answer written, that is the correct answer. But if it says without a negative power, then you would have to write that as negative 4 divided by x cubed. So there we have differentiated um, 2 over x squared to give us minus 4 over x cubed. The second one, OK, let's call this the yellow equation so we can colour code this. Now the square root of x, you should have remembered, is of course x to the power a half. Now it's in the correct form to use the formula. The power is a half, bring down a half, multiply it by the number in front two. Two times a half is, of course, one. X, now take one away from a half, gives you minus a half. That is the correct answer, but without a negative power, it's one over x to the half, and if you prefer to use the square root symbol, which is how the question was worded in the first place, then you could, if you want, write that as 1 over the square root of x. And then finally, slightly more complicated function, let's call this the pink function. Two things added together, we know all about how to do that. You do it term by term, first of all root x, then 1 over root x. So we need to write 
that as x to the half plus x to the minus a half. Do the differentiation. I think I need to go down here rather than alongside. Bring down the power. That's a half x to the minus a half plus bring down the power which is minus a half x to the minus 3 over 2. That is the correct answer. It's very messy. Now, first of all, of course, we will make this term negative here because we're adding a negative number. And you might like to leave it like that, half x to the minus a half minus a half x to the minus 3 over 2. If you want to use the root notation, this is just a little bit more tricky and needs great care. x to the minus a half is 1 over root 2. I beg your pardon, it's 1 over root x. So a half times 1 over root x is 1 over 2 root x. Very important that the root x is going to the bottom line, the 2 isn't going anywhere. Now this one here, minus 1 over 2. Now x to the minus 3 over 2 is of course 1 over x to the 3 over 2. So you could put 2x to the 3 over 2 on the bottom line. Or you could put the square root of x cubed. Now, there are different views on um, how to write answers of this type. As I say here, probably this is perfectly okay if you're going to go and do something with it. If you want it to look a bit nicer, you might prefer that solution. So just be careful when you've got roots, particularly if they're on the bottom line to start with, because when you differentiate them, then it starts to get more complicated. So you're now really moving into finding the gradient functions of quite difficult examples, and you'll need great care with working uh, with these indices, and you must be very confident uh, of doing that. If you're finding this a bit tricky at this stage, go back, have a look at the work on indices, practice a few more of those, and then come back uh, to try this, this particular topic again. OK, best of luck with that. OK, Marie, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? OK, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together. So can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on. Well done.